Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum viewers and welcome to my channel. And in today's video, we, are, we will try to understand the geometrical interpretation of double integral that is also called the volume in, uh, interpretation of double integrals. And in one of my previous videos, we uh, na uh, having named geometrical interpretation of univariate um, integration. Over there, we try to understand that if a certain function f of x is if it is continuous on a closed interval a b like for example if your function f of x is having certain curve ones when it is plot on a on a two dimensional uh, coordinate system so over there if this is your function f of x it's represented as y and we are having a certain closed interval a b over here and we just try to bound this curve within this closed interval then the area under the curve over here can be easily evaluated by the help of a single inter integral that is that is this so a definite single integral helps in determining the area under the certain curve representing this function f of x so in the same way, likewise, we'll try to understand the geometrical interpretation of double integral. And one thing more before approaching over there, that if I just take a unit integrand, you know, the function is mentioned in the integ integral, the function is said to be the integrand. And if you're having a unit integrand means if your f of x is equal to one, then this definite integral is going to give you nothing but a single value and it will be something unidimensional and represents nothing but a number on a on an uh, on a line okay so it is something like this something like this okay and that's what you this thing was quite uh, uh cleared in the second fundamental theorem of calculus uh, in one of my videos in the in in my last video if you just scroll scroll in the videos list of my channel you can find it over there so this thing represents nothing but a single number lying on a number line right over here okay so if in a single integral if your function f of x is unit function then the integral gives you nothing but a number lying on a number line and but if on the other side if your f of x is certain uh, is expressed in the form of an algebraic expression then you're definitely going to have a value which is expressed in square units and it is going to represent area bounded under the certain curve so that's it now we are going to approach to the to our to the, today's topic so in order to understand the geometrical interpretation of double integral uh, i just thought that i should uh, pre-design here a three-dimensional uh, coordinate system here and I just preferred to I just preferred here the first octant all right where your x y and z are all positives just for the uh, in order to make us easy understanding that's it so over here on the x y plane I just manage a certain uh, piece of plane I just call it G and it's lying on the XY plane so what I do first I'm going to divide this entire plane G into M number of partitions and I'm going to call those partitions as P and they are M in numbers M could be any numerical value we are not going to specify that here so simple as that we are going to divide this entire plane into m number of partitions having same size okay their dimensions length and breadth they should be same okay they must not be irregular so allow me to draw the partitions here first so I just tried to make uh, partitions here on this entire plane G lying on a, on the XY plane here so and make sure that they their dimensions or their size should be should be very constant okay they must not vary they, they must not be different okay so 
you can see here that if I just pick up this partition P, there, the, there are near about M number of partitions, and I call each partition as my P and having uh, their values in the subscript like P1, P2, up to PM partitions. Th that's it. Okay, and the size of the partition is represented by a norm. This is a norm, or you say this notation represents the magnitude of the partition, all right, or the area of the partition. It's like that. Okay, so, all right, so you see here, if I just pick up this, this cell or this partition right over here, okay, it's having breadth xi. And, I, and, the, and, the, and the length is yi, and this is the pith partition, or you say. It's like this. It's the pith partition, all right? So this is it. I'm going to highlight this thing. And with the help, uh, I'm keeping this uh, partition pi or keeping this cell pi as my base. I'm, I will try to develop here a parallel pipette. Okay, and before constructing here a parallel parallelopiped having a certain height uh, z, uh, and that will be represented by a function, a double uh, double variable function f of x i y i. Okay, it is having the height equal to this function. So, or, or in other words, you can say that this function is going to represent the height of the parallelopiped. Okay, which is so it is said to be uh, developed from this plane G, from the partition of this plane G, like that. Okay, so before uh, constructing that parallel pivot, I'm going to draw here a surface, right, uh, right above this plane G. It is going to be situated over here in the 3D space, right uh, in this octant and right above this G. And that surface S is, uh, it is going to be represented by a three-dimensional function, okay? Or the three, or a three-variable function like that. So uh, let me draw that surface S right above this G and then we are going to continue the drawing. Okay, so this is your surface S, all right? And it is uh, situated here in your 3D space. So definitely it is uh, represented by a certain function having three variables like this. And here your Z variable is representing the function involving these two variables. So I'm going to write this. like this x y something like this okay now i'm going to develop here a parallel pivot from this base from with respect to this partition and it's going to be bounded by the surface like this so this is a parallel pivot that i've just tried to develop to my level best having this base this partition as a base and it is raised up till here so this thing if I just try to understand that if this is for example a point having coordinates <coughs> xi yi if this is a point then the corresponding z coordinate is going to be traced somewhere here and the z coordinate is actually representing the this bivariate function so it is going to be expressed like this okay and you can see here that this is a height of your of your beautiful parallel pivot okay so if the height of the parallel pivot is the if this equal to this bivariate function corresponding to this ordered pair point of two tuples and this is the base of this uh, 3d object 3d cuboid so the volume of this parallel pipette can easily be evaluated by using uh, that primary formula of your volume which is base area into height so here your base area is the area of this rectangle and your height is equal to your f of x i y i all right so in this way the volume of your uh, of this 3d object can be determined 
So if you just try to develop here infinite number of parallelopipeds, then it is going to, uh, then the summation of the volumes of all those parallelopipeds are going to give you the estimated volume of the 3D object bounded uh, under the surface S and above this plane G. Okay, so if I just try to maintain here an equation of the volume, so my volume is equal to base area into height. That's a general formula of the volume, you know that. So the volume of your parallel pivot is over here is the height, which is my this, okay? into my base area which is xi into the yi and over here i just assume that my xi and yi lengths are extremely small so i just call them as my del x into del y like that and this is your del a this is the area so how about if i just write it like this something like this okay so this is it now if I just try to draw my infinite number of P partitions so if my M approaches to Z to infinity then the size of my partitions are definitely going to be extremely small approaching to infinite decimal value or almost approaching to zero so in this way, I'm going to have infinite number of parallel pipettes, and they are going to the summation of the volumes of all those infinite cuboids are are going to help me in determining the volume of this 3D object bounded under the surface S and above the plane G. Okay, so if I just I just try to maintain here a, a rough sketch that. If I just try to draw here infinite number of parallel pipettes, then I can get the concept or I can get the idea or the estimated value of my of my volume of this 3D object. So in order to bring accuracy, what I do, I will I will increase my number of cells. So I, I'm going to increase my number of cells up to infinity. And then in this way, the size of my each partition is going to be uh, infinitesimally small. So they will approach to zero. The size or the magnitude of each uh, partition is going to approach to zero. So this is going to help me in getting an accurate volume of the object, of the 3D object. So the total volume of this 3D object, I once again repeat, bounded under the surface s and above the plane g you know this is the s this is your g so i can get this thing by taking the summation of of all my volumes of the parallel pipettes so i is going from 1 to m and m is approaching to infinity and i'm going to write it like this okay so for more accuracy if i put the limit that if my p is approaching to zero it means that my m is approaching to infinity then the volume and at the place of my area i'm going to write here del xi into del yi all right so then I'm going to get a very, very approximated answer or uh, dealing to a very high degree of accuracy. I'm going to get the answer of the volume of my 3D object bounded by these two S and G. So once the limit is here, so I can now write this summation in the form of a double integral because now I'm having two dimensional di dimension, two differentials involved here so i'm going to use your two integrals okay representing your x and y dimensions involving these differentials and i'm going to write my integrand over here like this 
know there is no need to put down your i in the subscripts and all that because now the integral this big guy is over here okay that's it so you can now understand i hope you have now understood that the double integral helps in determining the volume of any 3d object bounded by a certain curve s which is so developed with the help of this function f of x because you can see here that s is represent represented by this function capital f is having an involvement of this small f of x y because the g coordinate is interpreted by this function f of x y over here i hope you can see it it's quite uh, the fonts are quite quite negligible but i hope you can get the get the idea that this is your f of x y all right so the small f this function f is responsible in 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 assigning the surface s okay so so that's it so if the integrand is expressed in the form of some algebraic expression involving some two variables then you are definitely going to get a volume but if but if you are having a function having which is equals to one if the if this bivariate function is is a unit function then now you're going to have a condition like this there's nothing here it's just one here so now once when you try to integrate this into uh, this condition having integrand one then you are going to have nothing but area now there is no concept of volume here because now the volume value is simply one so it is going to lie at the bottom so you're simply going to have the area bound of this plane g okay you're just going to have the value of the area of this plane g and that's it okay so i hope you have now understood that uh the the geometrical interpretation of the double integral is uh, is so um, enunciated exactly on the pattern of the geometrical interpretation of the single integral okay so as i've told you in the beginning that if you're having integrand one in the dub in the single integral and you are simply going to get a number value lying on a, on a line that's it you're going to have a uni unidimensional thing and if you're having an uh, uh, a very very well defined algebraic expression and the function here in in the integrand you are going to have an area in the same way if you are having a properly defined function here then in the double integral you are going to have a volume after doing a complete after finishing up the complete integration but if you are having one here in the place of your integrand then you are going to have area here okay so that's all for today inshallah in the next video we are going to discuss a couple of examples how to do iterated double integration okay so till that time just allow me to sign off and inshallah i'll see you in future with the part two of this double integral video take good care of yourself and if you find this video helpful please subscribe my channel and hit on the like hit on the bell icon and put down your feedbacks in the comment box and share this video with your friends and other learners take good care of yourself pray for me allah hafiz